I'm, uh, I'm happy to see all the faces finally, alhamdulillah. Uh, inshallah, we'll not have, uh, we'll, we'll put all these days behind us. Um, so we are at the end of uh, chapter 6 and uh, we're still uh, discussing the router routing. So we discussed last time the, uh, the uh, router routing and we said that unlike the host routing, routers have uh, two types of routes only. Uh, local routes and remote routes um, and uh, also unlike the host routers may have multiple exit interfaces and uh, in this example here we are focusing on router 1 and router 1 has uh, three uh, exit interfaces or three exit doors so uh, we have uh, discussed uh, two types of uh, reachable uh, networks uh, the ones that are directly connected so router one here has three directly connected routes or three directly connected networks. Uh, these directly connected uh, networks, as we have uh, discussed before, these are learned once the router starts uh, all these interfaces. Once the interface starts, it doesn't need any information from anyone to tell it that this, uh, con uh, this uh, network is directly connected to you. So that's why we see here that um, uh, uh, these three routes or these three networks marked with C and as we said before uh, this column indicates how the router has learned about this route how the router has learned about this uh, route so if it's uh, C if it's C this means a South okay. this means that it's directly connected it's directly connected so uh, uh, the C ones are this, this, and this. Network. Okay. This is FX? Hmm? This is FX? No, no, no. This is network. Telecommunication. Telecommunication. Okay. So, uh, uh, um, so if it's C, this means directly connected. And as we can see, there are three directly connected uh, networks for router uh, three. There is L, and we'll talk about this L in a minute. And other than this, we have D. D refers to the fact that these uh, uh, networks have been learned by R1 through another protocol, which is not directly connected to that, through another dynamic routing protocol. And as we have discussed before, D here indicates IGRP. Uh, so dynamic routing protocols, uh, they are used to exchange <coughs> messages between routers to learn about not by the directly connected ones, the remote routes. Okay, so R1 learns about these networks from R2. Okay, through the use of IGRP dynamic routing protocol. Well, okay, okay, type. What is this L? L, L is called so L here stands for. Local default route. And what this means is <clears throat> when the router starts, uh, the first thing it does is that it inserts in the routing table without starting any dynamic routing protocol. It's, it, it, it inserts in the routing table all the directly connected networks because it directly learns about them. But also it adds this local default route, which if you, if you observe here, it has an exact address, okay, with an exact match slash 32. And what this means is that the router will add one route entry for each interface that has the exact match, uh, match of this particular address. So for example here, Remember, this IP address is the IP address of the network. It's not the IP address of the switch. Switch do not have IP address. This, uh, uh, this address is for the entire LAN, for this LAN. So if I want to know the, uh, the IP address of this PC1, so what I need to do is to say, OK, so I have 192.168.10, OK? And then dot .10 for the PC, and dot .1 for the default gateway or this exit interface. Okay, so uh, uh, the IP address for this is 
1. Okay, so this is the one that we have here. And it's slash 32 to indicate that this is a direct match, which means that the router declares all these exit interfaces as destinations, which is, which is something interesting because, well, the routers are not destinations, right? Routers are not supposed to be destinations, right? But this happens... Programming this? No. But this happens, this happens when, Ba'a? This happens when we want to do troubleshooting. Sorry. Sorry. We, if we want to do it, troubleshooting. So if, we, if, if PC1, if PC1 uh, 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 finds out, or the user yani, of PC1 finds out that there is no uh, 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 internet connectivity, there is something wrong with the internet. Okay? So I need to do troubleshooting. So the first thing is to a is to say ping localhost to see if the stack is, is, is correct. Then the next level, I want to make sure that I can communicate beyond the LAN, okay? And the way to do this is to, is to ping the default gateway. When you ping the default gateway, you require the router to respond back to you, okay? So it's as, you know, as, as, as we said before, the router is like a roundabout, right? Roundabout is not supposed to be the final destination. However, there are times when you just want to know if the roundabout is there or not. Okay, so this option is only made for testing connectivity or for troubleshooting. So that's what we refer to as the local default route. So routers usually put this local default route by default in the, in the routing tube. So, so can the router not do that? Yes. Routers, they have the option not to put this local default route in the routing tape. Why? Sometimes because of security reasons. The router doesn't want to, uh, to be declared as a destination on this particular interface. So how will they troubleshoot? In that case, you, uh, you can't. But sometimes, usually we don't do it on default gateways, but we do it, for a router that belongs to Google, for Okay? If a router that belongs to Google, they have this local default route, and they allow every, each and everyone to say uh, uh, ping uh, this router interface or this IP address, well, the, the, there's a chance that uh, you can send millions of these requests and bring the router down, right? So there are some like security reasons uh, that routers sometimes do not you know, add this explicit local default route. Well, okay. Okay, so, so with that said, what we need to do now is to do the same exercise that we did for host routing. Okay, so we want to know which, which of these lines have, been, uh, 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 have a match and which one that will be selected. Okay, I don't have a paper here, but I can memorize names. And if, you, if, if someone tells me what is the procedure exactly, you can get a bonus. Okay. For the uh, other side? Hmm? You mean this table or the other one? No, for... Well, it's, it's the same. It's the same. The procedure itself is the same. Okay? We used to see which uh, lines that matches. How? Where we compare them. Uh, now we do the net masking to the line. And then we, can, we take... The second procedure is that we take the... All connected lines. All a matching lines. All matching lines. Uh -huh. And the last thing that uh, we see the F. La, we, we, we cannot take all of them. No, we see, we see the rest matching. Uh, but based on what? Based on what? Uh, it was uh, matching like all ones. All ones? Like we select the best match. The best match. Best match based on what? I want, I want you to be accurate. Like let's say that this mm -hmm. was uh, uh, 168.10, and we have like uh, line 1 and 2 and 3, mm -hmm. and line 3 was like 168.10, uh, so it's best match. There, there is a definition for, for the best match. There is a definition. We select the one that fulfills that definition. Okay. So I, 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 I want you to be accurate. As I, as I remember, 
وما انا لاحظت يعني اي نوتست ان ذا ان ذا ان ذا ميد تيرم يعني ماني ماني ستودنتس دي جست بوت اني ثينج ذاتس نوت اكوريت وي نيد تو ليرن تو بي اكوريت ها عشان بس ايه نوت تو كونفيوز اذرز سو وي سيلكت ذا وان وذ ذا ماكسيمم نمبر اوف وانز ان ذا سبنت ماسك ذاتس ذا ديفينشن اوكي If we have multiple lines, we select the one with the maximum number of ones in the subnet mask. Where is the subnet mask? It's this one, here. This, this is the subnet mask. When we say slash eight, this means eight ones and all zeros. When we say slash 24, 24 ones and all zeros. When we say slash 32, all the 32 are ones, which means exact match. Okay? <coughs> so, Even though here in, the, in this exercise, but it's a bit interesting. We are focusing on R1, but we need to know which line that will be activated when PC1 sends a packet. Okay? When PC1 sends a packet with a specific IP address, this means that PC1 ha now has a packet. Okay? with a specific destination IP. Okay? This packet is supposed to be going or received on this interface because this is the interface that PC1 is connected to, right? But now R1 will pick it up, supposedly. R1 will pick it up and then it needs to take certain action to activate or to select only one of these routes to route this packet through, okay? So the way that we do that from now on is, is not uh, 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 to be passive. Uh, so we'll try to make it a little bit E. So this is the destination IP, and, uh, and this uh, 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 packet coming with this destination IP on this port, okay? So what will happen is that this IP will be matched against all these lines. Of course, I don't have to, re to do it one by one from beginning to end. I, I can just uh, visually try to uh, say, okay, so this one, it's, uh, yeah, and we start. Of course, line, line one here, remember, line one was always matching, right? This is the default route. Gateway of the last resort here, and the network is 000 slash 0. So this is the, the local default. So this is, sorry, the salamat. The last resort, which is the default route. Remember in the, in, the, in the host routing, we said that line one always matches because the network is zero, 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 slash zero, so it matches all the time, okay? Or line five, or line six, or line seven, or whatever. Uh, uh, so we try to, uh, uh, each time, take this IP address, and then we try to see, okay, so this 192.168.10, dot one and this is dot ten dot zero slash twenty four okay so I put them on top of each other twenty four means that we, we require twenty four bits to match which means three bytes so the first three bytes do they match yes if the answer is yes then I put the number here so here we have one and line five matches of course this this line and line four matches. Okay? So which one bad do we select? Five. We select the one with the maximum number of ones, which in that case is a is 32. Okay? All right? Sahel? Okay, so let's... Type, uh, okay. Type. Uh, uh, for line two, PC1 wants to send a packet to PC2. PC1 wants to send a packet to PC2. What is the, uh, this, I actually, Bardo, I don't have to give you the IP address for PC2. You're supposed to know it. This one, right? And the IP address is this. So it's 192.168.11.10. Actually, I don't have to give you this. Okay? You should be able to figure it out. But uh, here, what, which lines match? So, uh, seven, seven. One matches. And six. We agree. Yeah, six. And six. And seven. Huh? Seven. Huh? Seven. Based on what? Seven requires exact match. 32 bits. Shift back. Shift back. Shift back. Shift back. 
32 bits, they have to, all of them have to match, which means that the IP address should be 192.168.11.1. Is this why? And mean, this actually 11.10, right? Hey, 192, dot .11. This is the destination address. The other one is the same, but here one, and we require exact match. Okay, which means. All of these, all of these bytes, they have to match. Do we have exact match? No. Uh, if the yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, th slash thirty two is equivalent to two fifty five. Dot two fifty five all the way. Four four two fifty five. So all ones, yeah. Okay. So, 1 and 6, so the answer is 6, one. Okay. PC1 wants to send a packet to 209.keza.keza.keza. Hmm. Which another 34? A. A. Eh? A. Before the 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 A. Uh -huh. And this is slash 30. Slash Those two addresses match. What's your name? Jason Yes. Okay. Those two match. Those two lines match. How? So 2 to 4, we have back to, uh, because 30 here, remember, 30 is, big, is, is bigger than 24, so it's not 24. So 24 plus 6. So the first 6 bits of these two numbers, they have to match. Okay? So let's see. Let's see. 2 to 4, 2 to 4, based on يعني, my uh, experience, يعني, is 1110000. One, 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 zero, 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 uh, yes, that's it. Okay? How did I know this? You will know this. You will learn this and it will be better than me in calculation. I don't memorize 2 to 6, but it's easy. 2 to 6 is 2 to 4 plus 2. So basically here, this is 2, and the rest is the same. Right? And we require the first 6 bits to match. Uh -huh. 6 bits. Right? And this is actually typical for uh, WAN connections. Remember, this is WAN connection. It's Serial point to point. We have two types, yani commonly, we have two types of connections. E either gigabit Ethernet, this is gigabit Ethernet, hey, gigabit Ethernet. So we have two, two gigabit Ethernet. This one, we call it zero slash zero. This one, we call it zero slash one. Hey, gigabit, zero slash one, zero slash zero. Okay, this one, we call it serial point to point. Which is this one, yeah. okay, and uh, and also, yeah. So this actually this uh, uh, default gateway it should uh, sort uh, this default route is supposed to go this way, which is also through that serial port. Voila. Okay. So here the first six bit. So this is very common for WAN connections. For WAN connections, we have only two addresses. Okay. And we always uh, use slash 30. I will, we'll talk about this in, in the next chapter. Type. So this one is line 1, taban, and line 8, which in that case we select line 8. Type. PC1 wants to send a packet to the host IP address 10.1.1.0. Now but we are going to this, to this remote network. Okay? Yeah, we don't care. We need to uh, use the procedure. So the procedure is one, always here. Okay. What else? Let's see. And then a two. Ten. Uh, ten dot one dot one dot zero, and this is a ten dot one dot one dot ten. 
and we require three bytes matching. So that matches. So line two. Line three, no. Line three is 10.1.2, and this is 10.1.1. So line three does not match. One and two, we better. Okay. Uh, the next one is PC1 wants to send the packet to host 10.2.2.0. Hmm? Hmm? Number one. No one, meaning hey, route one. Yeah. Okay. PC1 wants to send a packet to this address. No one. Huh? Number one. No one. Nothing. Well, hatta number one? This is loop back. Yes. And I will like a PC1 wants to send a packet to this. To this loop back. What will exactly happen? PC1, when it sends a packet to this particular destination, the packet will not exit PC1 aslan. <laughs> it's for troubleshooting PC1, not troubleshooting the router. Now remember, now here we are focusing on R1. Okay? So I cannot even select line 1. What? Because it's not going to go router 1 aslan. It, it, it will never exit PC1. So this is, in fact, it's done just to trick you. For, for, for multiple choice, it will be A, B, C, D, and none of the above. So this is none of the above. So it will not go to R1. So R1 will not pick it up. So this is the end to here. Here we were actually using the 192.168. So each byte gets converted to the decimal equivalence of this, of this binary equivalence. So for example, 192 is in fact 1, 1, and all zeros. We'll learn how to do this. Okay. <clears throat> here, so... In fact, 192.168.10.0 slash 24, that's a network address. It's not a host address. Why? Because when we say 24, it divides the address into three bytes and one byte. Okay? And this one byte is the host. Okay? And this one byte has zeros. So it's not, it doesn't refer to a particular host. It refers to the whole to the whole land, to the whole house, but not to a particular host. Uh, chapter 6, sorry. And just to let you know, we are jumping to chapter 8, which starts to talk about addressing. Okay? Uh, this is not to say that chapter 7 will not be covered. Chapter 7 will be covered later because chapter 7 talks about transport layer. So we want to finish all the uh, uh, network layer aspects before we go to, a, to the transport layer aspects. Okay? So chapter 6 talks about addressing, IP addressing. Okay? So we want to, a, to identify the different types of IP addressing. So basically, we have uh, uh, the IP address, as we all know, is 32 bits, right? Okay, and it's uh, and and we usually use not you always use the what we call the dotted decimal notations. Type. So there is there is actually a a, a, يعني, a division here which is very important. We we divide this address into two parts. There is the network part. Okay, and there is the host part. Okay. By dividing the the IP address into a network part and a host part, <coughs> we can identify the type of that IP address. There are three types. If the host part is all zeros, regardless of the length, okay, then we call it a network address. And what that means is that this address will refer to the location where this host is, where, this, where some hosts are, but will not refer to a particular host. Okay? So this address it refers to the, the location where some hosts are. 
similar to if this host part is all ones we call it broadcast address and what that means is this address uh, refers to everybody in the house again not a specific host okay but everybody in the house this this address the network address can never be because this is what happened in, 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 in the meter can never be used as a destination address in the packet remember this I can never send a packet with a destination address destination IP and put here uh, 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 192.160 slash 24 I cannot, I cannot do that where do we use the network address we use it in the routing table to match with the IP address but we never use it in the packet itself remember this this is very important okay but the broadcast address can be used as a destination address. If we want to send to all the hosts on a network, then we can send a packet to a broadcast address, which means all the hosts will receive that packet. All the hosts, not a particular one, everyone. Type otherwise, it's a host address. Host address, which means that a it refers to a specific host. Like by A192.26.10.10 refers to a host. The, the IP address of the default gateway, is it a valid host address? 192.168.10.1. Is it a valid host address? Yes, it's a valid host address. Okay? But it's used to refer to the default gateway, which is the router interface. Mexico? So that's it. That's, that's the whole point of this chapter. So from now on, we'll just go through exercises to, it, to try to identify whether an address is, is one of these three types. Okay? But in order for us to do this, we have to be able to do it very... So this is just an, uh, a Math 101 exercise where we want to uh, uh, refresh your uh, binary to decimal and decimal to binary conversion. That's all. Okay, but uh, uh, just to introduce what this chapter is all about. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do this first. So this is binary to decimal. So we have the binary and we want to convert it to decimal. <clears throat> so this is, uh, is uh, 2.0, 2.1, all the way to 2.7. So if we have one here, this means that this number will be accumulated. Right? So this, this is one, so we have to add one. Two, two to the power zero is one, right? Plus, this one is a 2.2 to the power 2, okay? So 2 to the power 2 is 4, so 1 plus 4, and so on. So we'll keep doing that. Okay? So that's how we convert from binary to decimal. From decimal to binary, uh, that we'll, have to, we'll have to look at it in the next uh, slide. Okay, so, <clears throat> so for example here, so this one is equivalent to 2 to the power Five and this one two to the power seven. I don't have bad to do any all the zeros. So this is thirty-two, and this is one twenty-eight. Thirty-two, one twenty-eight by one. When one sixty. Okay, one sixty. Okay. Uh, one of the we'll we'll learn about so many tips in this chapter that will make our calculations fast, because if you if in the exam if you try to do all these uh, exercises using the calculator, good luck. It will slow you down and will not, you will not have time for other questions. So uh, all what we are going to do in this chapter is to learn many, many tips. How to speed up this calculation. And you will see in this chapter and the next chapter, we will rarely use calculator. Very rare we use calculators. We'll try to avoid using the calculator as much as possible. So one of the tips here is that, you know, if I want to convert this number given that we converted this number and we know that it's 160 okay so we try to correlate so as we can see here this one 
has one difference with this one, which is this one, right? This one right here. This one is equivalent to 8. So this is a... So I don't have to wait. I don't have to do calculators and so on and so forth. Right? Again, correlating this one with this one, 169. See, the, the, the numbers, they look complicated, but in fact, it's uh, very straightforward. Okay? So from here to here, hmm? what is the difference here? This one. 173. That's it. See how easy it is. Although the, the numbers, yani, look ones and zeros everywhere, and but it's it's very simple. Okay. By <coughs> categorizing, when we look at the uh, uh, dotted decimal notation of the IP, we should be able to tell very fast, very fast. Okay. That this is a host address, network address, or broadcast address. Very fast. So to be able to do that, we'll just today refresh your, uh, your uh, binary to decimal conversion and decimal to binary conversion. I assume that you all you know, you know this. So uh, of course, systematically, um, so any number can be converted to, um, uh, yeah, can be converted to binary if we just know that this, this is equivalent to 2.0, 2.1, all the way to 2.7. Right. So this is. So here, uh, it's the it's the reverse operation. So what we want to do here is that we need to know that this this is equivalent to. If I put one here, it will be equivalent to one twenty eight, right? So typically, what what we do is that we take this number one one fifty one, and we try to compare it first with one twenty eight. We have to we have to go from a from left to right, okay. If it's if it's bigger than one twenty eight, then we put zero here. We, sorry, we put one here. If we if it's less, then we put zero and we go to next. The next one is a is equivalent to sixty four. So if this number is so if we put one, we have to subtract one twenty eight from this number and so on. That's all we need to do. Okay. The number was greater than, uh, for example, 256, and we saw that it, if it's... It cannot be, because we said that... Because we said that we deal with each byte separately, so it cannot be more than 256. It cannot be more than 255, actually. 255 is all ones. Don't worry, okay? So, one, one, uh, 155... Is bigger than 128, so we put one here. So when we subtract, so eight, eight, seven, and this is two. Okay. So uh, 27 is less than 64. <coughs> 27 is less than 32. 27 is more than 16, so we put one. So it's 27 minus 16, so it's a one one. So one one is 11, so it's eight. Okay. It's bigger than eight. And the difference is three, and three is one one. Once I reach a number that I already know, I, I just put the I put the binary equivalence. But uh, again, using the uh, the the correlation, if you look at this and this, what is the difference between uh, one fifty five and one forty seven? Eight. So eight is a is here. Okay. So all I need to do is just to a 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 0, 1. That's it. Unless this, is, this is equivalent. I can do it back from scratch and say this is bigger than 128. Do it like this. It will be, it will be slower. But if you, do, if you use the tip of correlation, correlating numbers, okay? So if I did one from scratch, I don't have to, a, to, to do everything from scratch. I can just use the correlation. One bardo uh, between 51 and 59, there's eight. So if I do one, the other one will be easy. So do any one of them. So 51. So 51 is uh, is not bigger than 128 and, and 64. 32, yes. So 32, 
So this is nine one, right? Nine one. So so bigger than so it's one and zero zero one one. That's it. And the other one is gonna be one one zero one 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 zero zero. Anyone not following this? Of course we can do it the the, the slow way and we spend time, but we want to always learn how to do these things very fast. Okay, any any questions? <laughs> The difference was uh, like a number like seven. Yes. Is there also a way we can... La, well, you cannot do this directly in that case. You have to, uh, yeah, you have to, uh, the correlation will not work uh, at least in a straightforward way. Any questions? Okay. So starting from here, but we will learn how to... Uh, uh, <coughs> <coughs> how to identify, as we said, uh, an address, whether it's uh, a network address, a host address, or uh, a broadcast address. We'll do that next time, inshallah.